is full of firsts. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Many of those firsts shaped our way of life. For 70 years, KPRC Channel 2 has been proud to be pioneers in shaping television and Houston history. Isn't it good to work for a place that has a sense of history? And indeed it is. See, taking the president from spring to compensation phones. If you have something you'd like Channel 2 Investigates to check out, call the tip line at 713-223-TIPS or email investigates at click2houston.com. KPRC, this is Channel 2 News Today. Breaking news this morning, the search for a thief, we're told, is armed and dangerous, already shot a woman at a business overnight. They had what happened during that violent confrontation. Also, a big honor for Kobe Bryant just weeks after his death. Ahead, how the NBA is planning to honor his memory and how fans can get tickets to his memorial service. Weather-wise, it is a cool morning. Cambrell says things will warm up and it'll be a beautiful weekend. Plus, it is almost time to rodeo. This morning, a look at what's new at the big event as the president and CEO and our friend of Rodeo Houston stops by with a preview. Good morning, good Saturday morning. That music always gets us, huh? Yes, it's already <laughs> rodeo time, my gosh. I just have all these problems. I can't, you know, it's difficult getting the boys figure back when you got Valentine's Day, the back holidays, you got rodeo with the barbecue. And fried it's, it's Oreos. It's against the law not to eat the barbecue, so you got to do that. And the fried Oreos. <laughs> yeah, that, that true too. Those are a lot of problems. I know. A lot Can't of help things. you there. And the boots that don't hurt your feet. Right. By, by the way, thank you to the viewers who uh, email me because I made a comment about how my feet hurt when the I got nice little comments. So I'm going to go try the, your, your suggestions. Huh. That's so we may nice. do Instagram and show people my aching feet. <laughs> Uh, take a look outside here. Uh, temperatures are still cool. 49 downtown, southwest as well. Galveston, still the warm spot. They're really primed up. Last night started out Mardi Gras weekend. Today we got these cool starts this morning, and then we'll continue to see increasing clouds. Clouds around, especially if you're down in the south, more clouds to the south than there are to the north. But we're going to be in the mid-60s today, mid-70s tomorrow. It's going to be kind of nice. 45 to 49 to 56 degrees currently. And you notice the overcast skies a little bit out there. Well, around the area, we still have low 40s in Cleveland and Liberty. Brenham's at 47, 51 in Palacios. We still have the winds that are coming basically from the east. We'll continue to see that until we start to see them turn from the south and east. And that'll be the beginning of our warming trend that'll go into the weekend. Uh, the, the week ahead. Futurecast model, you can see the clouds here down at the south and to put this in motion, and you notice we still have those around by 4 o'clock this afternoon. And a few showers showing up, at least on this model, in the very early hours of the morning, less than 10% chance. Exact track radar, quiet. So for the next hours, the next 10 hours, if you will, going to be about 63 by 1 o'clock, mid-60s by this afternoon. We're going to show you that 10-day forecast, and there is rain in the forecast for several days next week. We'll talk about that just ahead.
Guys. All right. Thank you, Kim Brown. We'll see you in a bit. Now to breaking news we first brought you at 6. A woman shot while trying to fight off a thief. That woman, we're told, working at a smoke shop when a man with a gun demanded money and then opened fire. Happened at the Vitram Smoke Shop off the Gulf Freeway near Almeda Genoa in southeast Houston. Channel 2's Taisha Walker live now on the scene with the latest. Taisha. Yeah, Jacob, it's unclear if that man got away with any money, but we do know that he remains at large this morning. Meanwhile, the clerk that was shot at this business right behind me, this smoke shop, she is recovering at a hospital this morning, expected to be okay. Houston police say the shooting happened a little after 1145 last night. They say a man wearing a black hoodie and a black ski mask walked into the business with a pistol demanding the wallet from a customer and demanding cash from the cash register. The clerk tried to reach for a gun underneath the counter, according to police, and that's when we're told that she was shot several times in the torso, uh, bullets hitting her chest. She was also injured in the hands and arms, according to Houston police. Police say the clerk never had a chance to pull and fire that weapon, but she is expected to be okay. We're told she is recovering this morning at a hospital. Reporting live in Southeast Houston, Taisha Walker, KPRC, Channel 2 News. All right, Taisha, thank you. Breaking news now on the coronavirus crisis. France's health minister has announced the first coronavirus death in Europe. Officials say the man, an 80-year-old Chinese tourist, has been undergoing treatment since January 25th. His daughter, who was also diagnosed with the virus, is expected to recover. This comes as the U.S. is preparing to evacuate hundreds of Americans from the Diamond Princess cruise ship. According to the U.S. Embassy in Tokyo, voluntary evacuation is taking place tomorrow. The ship has been docked in Yokohama, Japan, under quarantine since February 4th. More than 200 people on the ship have been diagnosed with the virus. Meantime, here at home, health officials don't want people to let their guard down when it comes to the flu. The Centers for Disease Control says 14,000 people across the country have died from the flu this season. 92 of them have been children. For many, it's because of the influenza B strain, we're told. Officials say influenza B hasn't been around since 1993, so anybody born after 1993 may not have the necessary immunity, which could put more kids at risk, of course. Warning signs that it's, a t it's time to get a child to the ER include high fever that won't go down, chest pain, trouble breathing, and severe dehydration. New this morning, a gruesome discovery for people in Northwest Houston overnight. A man found shot dead in the middle of the road. This happened just before 10 o'clock last night. Police say someone driving by North Main and East 43rd Street saw the body in the road with several people standing around it. That driver then called 911. Right now, police say they have no suspect information or any kind of motive. Now to a developing story we've been tracking for a week now. Today, a local family is holding a barbecue fundraiser after their loved one was hit and killed while riding his motorcycle. The driver of the SUV that hit 26-year-old Ricardo Sebulveda is still on the run this morning, and the victim's family is demanding justice. Last Friday, Ricky was helping his cousin by a motorcycle, took it for a test drive near the North Freeway in Gulf Bank. His parents say when Ricky stopped at a light, a car hit him and then took off. Ricky did not survive, and more than a week later, his family still has no answers. Just probably died there on the street, laying down in the street, or I don't know what. And that, that really hurts, and that's why I'm feeling like, you know what, you're right. We need to bring this to justice. So sad for that family. Today's fundraiser for Ricky starts at noon. A GoFundMe page has also been set up to raise money for his funeral expenses. For more on how you can help, you can go to our website, click2houston.com. Less than a month after his death, the basketball legend Kobe Bryant is being honored for his athletic ability. He was among the seven finalists named for the Naismith Basketball Hall of Fame Class of 2020. Bryant spent 20 years on the court with the L.A. Lakers. He helped the team win five NBA championships and is currently fourth on the all-time scorers list. The official Class of 2020 will be elected to the Hall of Fame on April 4th. Fans will gather to remember Kobe and his daughter Gianna Bryant on February 24th for a celebration of life at the Staples Center in Los Angeles. The Lakers released information yesterday saying fans can register through Monday for the chance to buy tickets on Ticketmaster website. Proceeds will benefit Bryant's Mamba and Mambasita Sports Foundation.
An Oklahoma teen says his Apple Watch saved his life. Skyler was in class when he got a notification that said, as you can see there, his heart rate was 190. He immediately knew something was wrong, of course. The teen was rushed to the hospital where he was diagnosed with a rare heart condition called SVT, which causes rapid heart rate that weakens the heart over time. From the time this happened till his heart surgery, um, his cardiologist called and said his heart rate got up to 280 in the middle of the night. There's always a reason for everything and that God has a reason for this. Skyler underwent nearly eight hours of surgery to fix his heart's rhythm. Amazingly, months later, the team is back on the field playing with extra equipment, a device that monitors his heart, along with, of course, his Apple Watch. Amazing story there. Now to the future of space, more specifically, the future of NASA. The space agency has picked four new mission proposals to study our solar system. One of the targets is Venus. The Da Vinci Plus proposal aims to analyze Venus's atmosphere for clues as to how it formed and evolved and whether it ever had an ocean. The Veritas proposal is geared toward mapping Venus's surface and figuring out why it developed so differently than the Earth. Mm. And final selections, will be made next year. That is so fascinating. I, I can't wait for those to come out. Well, this morning, a woman and her teenage daughter are in custody. It's a story that is hard to believe. Coming up, why the woman posed as a newborn baby photographer and what they did to a mother who wanted her baby's picture taken. Uh oh. But first, there are some weekend traffic alerts you'll need to know about. I'll run down the construction hotspots you'll want to avoid next on Channel 2 News Today that thing. Happy weekend to you this weekend, as every weekend. We've got some hot spots to talk about. As far as area traffic goes, uh, you'll want to avoid the West Loop at the Southwest Freeway, but only during the overnight hours. Unlike the last two weekends when we've had a full closure all weekend long, this weekend it's only from 9 p.m. until 5 a.m. nightly. So daytime hours, you're just fine. 290 inbound between Pinemont and 34th Street is neck down by three lanes. That's through Monday morning. Be aware of that. Slow go coming in from the Cypress area. North Loop westbound, the connector ramp between the westbound lanes and 45 northbound is going to be closed through tomorrow morning. And we've got four lanes neck down between the Hardy Toll Road and 45 westbound through tomorrow morning, too. All right, the uh, exit ramp getting off of the Gulf Freeway as you approach downtown and getting on to 59 southbound. That connector ramp is going to be closed through tomorrow morning. You will not be able to use that at all. And for the day today, we've got westbound delays across the San Jacinto River on I-10. Two lanes closed through 8 p.m. tonight. Drive safely this weekend and do have a great one. All right, and remember, you can keep track of all the road closures on click2houston.com if you just go to the traffic page or type in click2houston.com slash traffic. Well, sheriff's deputies in Washington state have arrested a woman and her daughter. Yeah, the woman is accused of posing as a newborn photographer to try and kidnap a baby. Investigators say the 38-year-old suspect posted it in a newborn baby group online offering to take free photos. Deputies began investigating after a woman called 911 believing that she had been drugged. The yes. detective says after the photographer's 16 year old daughter gave the woman a cupcake, she began to feel numb and drowsy immediately. And that's when she asked the woman and her daughter to leave. Her house keys are missing. She remembers her wiping prints down in the kitchen. We think she was seeking females five weeks and younger because she wanted a girl and she wanted them five weeks and younger, younger so she could raise it herself, take it out of state and pretend it was a newborn of her own. Oh my gosh. Deputies changed the locks on the victim's door and have placed a patrol car at her home for safety. The 38 year old suspect is now in jail. Her 16 year old daughter is in a juvenile detention center. Both are expected to appear in court on Tuesday. <laughs> Caught on camera, an accused shoplifter now under arrest after a man helped police with a good shove of his shopping cart. The suspect is accused of stealing power tools from Home Depot Ooh. and ended up running into the parking lot of a Walmart. That's when the shopper pushed his cart right in the way, oh. knocked him over, knocked him down. Nicely done. The officer was able to get to him. This all happened last month in Peachtree City, Georgia, which is in the Atlanta area. Some nice quick shot. thinking there and helpful because he was on his way out. Mm. Gave him enough time for the officer to grab him. All right, good stuff. A Florida Zoo has a big celebration. That's right, time to celebrate one of its animals. Coming up, a look at what thinks this black rhino 
so special that dozens of workers at the zoo turned out to celebrate his life. Plus, you may have received a musical Valentine's Day card mm -hmm. yesterday. Coming up next, Mr. O dissects one card to see what makes it work. Oh, wow. For less. Hey! Hey! I'm Mr. O, here with another... Oh, wow! ...moment at the Children's Museum of Houston. Recently, my kids got a greeting card that played music when open, much like this one. Now, after they played it over and over and over and over again, I came to one conclusion. I had to cut one of these open to figure out how to make it stop. Before we begin, remember, science is fun, but it can also be dangerous. So always have a responsible adult helping you. So the first thing I notice is the trigger mechanism here. When this gets pulled out by opening the card, that starts the music. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut that and push it back into the card. Now let's see what's inside. I have to admit, while the constant playing is annoying, this is very elegant. Here's the speaker connected to the circuit board. This black spot here is the integrated circuit and memory that holds the song, and this is the switch. You know, this switch reminds me of our burglar alarm we built a few months back. In both cases, we have a point that will conduct electricity when two parts come together. The two parts are kept apart by a piece of cardboard, but when the cardboard is removed, it activates the switch and closes the circuit. This has been another Oh Wow moment from the Children's Museum of Houston. We hope your mind can come out to play. You can check out Mr. O's Children's Museum segments every Saturday morning right here on KPRC Channel 2. And the museum wants you to know some of the experiments could be dangerous and require adult supervision. Speaking of Oh Wow, the oldest rhinoceros in the U.S. is one year older. Oh Wow. Zoo Miami says Toshi, the rhino, celebrated his 43rd birthday <laughs> this week. It's a big deal for a species that usually only lives 35 to 40 years. Oh he's, Wow. And he's endangered. He's an endangered Danger black rhino. Toshi was born in Japan on February 10th, 1977. He moved to Miami in 1983. Uh -huh. When were you in Miami? I, I was in Miami from uh, 85 until 99. Well, so Toshi and I, and I live not far from the zoo. I should have gone to visit him. Aww. I feel bad back. now. Mm -hmm. I better get Happy there soon because he's running out of time. <laughs> yeah. Hey, uh, we're still celebrating. No, hey. well, see, some of you got that. Uh, we're still celebrating Valentine's Day here, Valentine's Week, Valentine's Weekend, Valentine's oh. Month, actually. What's this? And this is a cracker. It's a, it's a peanut butter fudge heart. Well, oh. of That's course it is. Nice, yeah. of course. It I is. know it is. But look at this shot. This is the morning. Wow. This is this morning. Beautiful shot there. Thank you, John. Sun trying to peek out in Kingwood. That's a great... I didn't know what kind of filter you use on your camera. Mm. That is really nice. <laughs> Thank you for that. Look outside. Kaplan Sinus Relief camera shot. 49 degrees is the temperature at Hobby Airport. Look at these other temperatures around the area. Mid-40s in the inland areas. The warmer along the coast. 56 in Galveston. You notice that the winds, not very brisk at all. So I, I call it comfortably cool. And we have the winds from the east and some from the northeast. 10 miles an hour, 8 and 7 and less. So that's good when you have it that way. And it's going to be that way for a while. Big area of high pressure well off to the north and east of the United States. Sinking air, all of that. They've got really cold temperatures there. We are not so bad. We have the cool temperatures, if you will. But that's why we have the flow coming in from the east and northeast for the most part here. Let's take a look at what our futurecast model is going to say going forward here. This is as of 7 o'clock this morning. Put that in motion. You see the clouds coming in tomorrow morning very early once I have all the showers off the coast. And those models have been pretty consistent. So that's why I don't have any rain in the forecast for the next uh, day, at least for tomorrow. Monday, about a 10% chance to the 6 o'clock on Monday. Going into Tuesday, we see a few showers around there as well. This model and is not in agreement with the other models. So these could change in terms of your rain amounts. Rain chances next week, almost every day for the most part. Wednesday are broader 
area, I call this the Schmutz Day, with the biggest chance of rain and cloud cover. It's, the temperature's not going to go very high or low. Colder areas to the north, you can see wintry precip in the central part of the state. Some of that wintry precip may be close to Austin. Thursday, 1215, rain around. Same thing on Friday as it clears on out of here. Cloud cover, yes, going into the weekend until we get to the following weekend on Sunday. We get a chance of showers, a slight though they may be. The temperatures go down after we get through Tuesday. We're back, back in those high temperatures in the 50s, so be ready for that. We're not done with winter, so don't think that we are. Exact track radar is quiet. 66 for us today, and over the next 10 days, you see that temperature warm up from where we are in the mid 60s now to the mid to upper 70s going into Sunday and Monday. Rough necks, weather's going to be just fine as they continue their unbeaten streak. Of course, they, <laughs> they just won their first game last week, so let's just jump on the wagon now and just say, we are the champions. Tomorrow here on Houston Newsmakers, the diversity of the candidates left running for the Democratic nomination may not be a positive thing for a political party trying to retake the White House. The party's trying to battle for its own soul, and if they can't figure it out, then the winner will be Donald Trump, because yeah. he's the only one who can step back and say, well, look at this chaos, right? Mm -hmm. I'm the only one who can give you a clear vision, even though sometimes it's flawed, mm -hmm. for what to do. Lots to talk about. UH Professor Brandon Roddinghouse on presidential politics tomorrow morning at 1030. Coming up tomorrow. Thanks, Cam Brown. It is almost that time of year. Can you believe it? You know the music. We are looking forward to it. It is rodeo time. Coming up next, president and CEO of rodeo is here to give us a preview of what's new for this year's big show. We'll be right back. Oh yeah, we know what that music means. In just over two weeks, it will be time to put on those boots and have a good time at Houston's biggest party, Rodeo Houston. Joining us now is president and CEO of the Rodeo, Joe Cowley. Joel, thank you for being in so early. Thanks for having me. All right, so you you, you said it just seems like you've been ready for rodeo for months. <laughs> Feels like we've already yes. been rodeoing, yeah, <laughs> exactly. getting ready for the show. Well, thank you. We appreciate it because it's always a good show. So lots of new stuff. Lots of new stuff. So some new things on the ground, some great new photo opportunities, 3D photo opportunities. <sighs> huge letters that spell out rodeo. We have a social spur, uh, which is a social media hub that's located on the north end of the stadium where people can come and recharge their phones, video, music, refill their water bottle, which will be a lot of fun. Good. Uh, in AgVenture, which is presented by our great friends, friends at Occidental, we have a walkthrough aviary this year wow. where fans can walk through and interact with parakeets and actually feed them. Oh my goodness. A balloon sculpture where the artist will grow this sculpture throughout the run of the show. Uh, out in the junction, which is the kids' carnival area, we have extreme dogs. So these are rescue dogs that have been taught to do tricks, disc tricks, dock dives, so they jump off into water, and then a display called Born to Buck, which highlights the magnificent bucking stock they're using the rodeo. We'll have mares and their babies out there for the fans to interact with. And it's all about the interaction, because that's 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 the fun part, is really being able to feel it and see it and know, you know, just how this is all put together, and, and it's so much fun. Yeah. Yeah, and, and we love uh, promoting agriculture as our core mission. And so we do a lot of things to draw people to the grounds, but we're very proud of what we do in AgVenture and in Shell Show Pride in the hall of NRG Center, educating people on how important agriculture is in our lives. I love it. All right, and we've got time for... Uh another perk that you got that you want folks to know about <laughs> yes so for those who are value minded which includes yes. most of us uh, make sure you get your half price carnival packs uh, they'll go on sale through the end of barbecue on february 29th those can be purchased at rodeohouston.com or through one of our carnival ticket sales committee members that you might see throughout the city uh, fifty dollars you get over a hundred dollars of value and then families might check out coming on a wednesday because we have family wednesday so seniors over 60 kids 12 and under get in free until noon on family Wednesdays. I love Wednesdays. I'm off Wednesdays, so that's when I'm taking the kids. <laughs> <laughs> really quickly, we have time just to mention Lizzo. Houston's own Lizzo is coming. Oh, we're so excited about that. And announcing that at Elsick High School, her alma mater last week was so exciting. Yes. Uh, I know she's excited to come. It's going to be a fantastic night on our Black Heritage oh, Day. Cannot wait. Thank you so much, Joel. All right, tickets on sale now. Remember, Rodeo is from March 23rd until March 22nd. March 3rd, sorry, until March 22nd. You can find all of this information and a replay of the segment online at clicktohouston.com after the show. We'll post it under our rodeo section of our website. We'll be right back. Live from KPRC, this is Channel 2 News Today.
Breaking news this morning, a woman hospitalized after being shot overnight by a suspected thief. This morning, he is on the run and police are on his trail. Also, he led the Rockets to back-to-back -back championships ahead, how he could soon be honored for having the heart of a champion. Plus, a consumer alert why thousands of ceiling fans are being recalled and the big danger that they may pose. All right, we'll get to all those stories in just a bit, but first, good morning. Nine o'clock on your Saturday morning. Get out there and enjoy this day. Because Cambrell says, and when he says it, it happens, it's gonna be another good one. Yeah, I think so. I mean, it's not gonna be the sunny day that we had yesterday. We had a lot of sunshine mm. out there. We're gonna see a lot more clouds out there today, but it's still gonna be warmer than it was yesterday. We topped out at about 62 degrees yesterday. We're gonna be a little bit warmer than that today. Right now, 48 degrees at Bush Intercontinental. Katie's at 50. Hobby's at 52 and even warmer. In Galveston, where it's 55 degrees, along with 55 degrees, we have a north wind at 10 miles per hour, so not bad, really. I've got a call. So, Cambo, should I take the bigger boat or the smaller boat out today? Either one will work today because seas are two to four feet, but the bays are smooth. So you keep the baby when you keep it in the bays. You want to take the big boat, you're going out. Uh, yeah, 1119 is a high tide. Low tide's coming up at 441 this afternoon. 65 degrees for your high in Galveston. The first big weekend of Mardi Gras for 2020. Hope you have plans. Be safe as you go down there. Calf to thigh height is a surf. It's going to be a moderate uh, sun out there. Just going to break through the clouds from time to time. 61 to 63 to 65 at 2 o'clock with those east winds primarily 5 to 10 miles an hour. So the Mardi Gras forecast a lot going on today at noon to three the crew of Aquarius at one o'clock today the zany golf cart you know they just I don't know where they come up with all of this stuff but it's a lot of fun every year at six o'clock the crew of Gambrina Gambrinus Gambrinus yeah Fiesta uh, uh, parades are tomorrow from one to four so 65 and 69 degrees warming up you see the clouds out there there's some breaks in clouds out there I was reading this and looking at the blue sky so we see enough blue sky to make you say it's a nice day Mid-60s tomorrow warms up even more. There's rain in the forecast. We'll talk about that coming up. Jacob? All right, Cambrell, thank you so much. Now an update to breaking news. A search for a gunman who shot a woman overnight. That happened as police say he was robbing a smoke shop, and then she tried to stop him. The shooting took place at the Vitram Smoke Shop off the Gulf Freeway near Almeda, Genoa in southeast Houston. Channel 2's Taisha Walker is live on the scene for us this morning with the latest. Good morning, Taisha. Sophia, good morning. That violent robbery took place inside of the smoke shop right over my shoulder last night around 11.45. Houston police say the man walked in with a black hoodie and a ski mask with a pistol demanding that a customer hand over their wallet and that the cashier hand over some cash out of the register. Houston police tell us that the cashier was then trying to reach for a gun by the counter and that is when she was shot multiple times. Take a listen as Houston police described what happened after that. During the course of the uh, robbery, the female supposedly went for a gun that was behind the counter, at which time the suspect uh, shot several times, striking the victim several times in the torso area. Yeah, and police go on to say that the uh, clerk was also shot in the chest, the arm, and the hand. We're told that she is expected to survive her injuries. She's recovering this morning at a nearby hospital. As for the attempted robber, we're told that that person is still at large this morning. Reporting live in Southeast Houston, Taisha Walker, KPRC, Channel 2 News. Taisha, thank you for that update. Hey, this morning, roads are back open along Highway 146 after police say an 18-wheeler spilled some hazardous material following a crash. This happened last night just north of Banana Street between FM 1765 and 519. Police say an 18-wheeler flipped on its side and began leaking some unknown substance. The driver of the truck suffered some injuries but was able to get out. At least one other crash happened in the area shortly after that driver crashed into debris and no one was hurt. TxDOT says at least one southbound lane is still closed while hazmat crews clean it all up. And now to a story you'll see only on two this morning. A Houston area mother searching for answers after she says her two-year-old daughter came home from daycare bitten and bruised. Heather Landrum took on to social media to post about the Kitty Academy of Richmond after she says her daughter was bitten and pinched while at the daycare last week. You can see the pictures there. Landrum says her two-year-old was only at the daycare for three days, but she quickly unenrolled her after she says the facility didn't adequately handle her child being injured while in their care. 
felt like I was just brushed off and it wasn't really taken as serious as I would have hoped it would have been. So the Kidding Academy of Richmond released a statement uh, is saying in part, we proactively notified law enforcement authorities and child protective services so that these injuries could be investigated on every level regardless of where and when they occurred. Our primary concern, they said, is the health and well-being of this child over the short term and the long term. Also only on two, a 14-year-old girl armed with a gun steps up to defend her home and protect her sisters from an intruder. Tracy Keene says she came home after her daughter called saying that a man was peeping through their window. By the time she got home, he was already trying to break inside. Keene's three daughters were inside the home, an 18, 14, and 2-year-old. Even though the intruder never made it inside, the girls had one other line of defense. The 14-year-old had been and trained to handle a gun and took it out of the locked box and loaded it. I mean, I was hoping I didn't have to use it, but if I did, then yes, I would have been able to. When Keen returned home, she says she saw the man jump down from the window, run to a nearby church where she confronted him. He ran off. Keen hopes that neighbors have some surveillance video that can lead to an arrest. And now to a consumer alert, a manufacturer recalling 70,000 ceiling fans after it says the blades can fly off and cause injury. Lowe's sold the Harbor Breeze 48-inch Santa Ana ceiling fans between May 2014 and January 2016. The manufacturers received 210 complaints about those blades coming off. The Consumer Product Safety Commission says in 10 cases they injured someone. People who have the fans are urged to stop using them and contact Fanon Industries. Well, now to the Astros, who are looking to put the sign-stealing scandal behind them, they hope, and finally play some baseball. big part of having a winning season will be their pitching and the addition of a familiar name. Sports Director Randy McAvoy is in West Palm Beach, Florida, with the team. Good morning once again from West Palm Beach, Florida. It is early in spring training, only day three, but a lot of focus obviously on the pitchers and catchers. Garrett Cole now gone from the starting rotation, but now you can insert Lance McCullers Jr. He's back after sitting out all of last season. The sounds of baseball echo throughout the complex. And on this Friday morning, in the middle of it all is Lance McCullers Jr. I'm excited to get going again. Obviously, I've had to wait a long time. It's felt like uh, a lifetime, but here we are. The 26-year-old is referencing his 18-month journey back from Tommy John's surgery that cost him all of the 2019 season. There were days where, you know, you wonder, you know, am I ever going to feel the same again? Am I ever going to, you know, come out of this, you know, this rehab? Is it, you know, especially early on. A healthy McCullers this season is just what the Astros need. I like his attitude. I like his... He likes to go out there and compete, and that's the guy we, we want. It means a lot to me for, to have uh, Jose's support, everyone's support. Um, I feel like I've gotten a lot closer to a lot of the guys over this past year. McCullers is laser-focused and more mature than ever now. Yeah, I've definitely have evolved mentally and physically. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm a father now, and uh, my priorities are a lot different than, than they used to be. But baseball is still his passion, and he's already envisioning the emotions he'll have when the comeback is complete. I'm sure I'll be nervous. You know, I'm sure I'll kind of have some of those rookie feelings all over again. I'm trying to really just stay, you know, focused on today, focused on taking one step at a time. Well, it's clear Lance's teammates are confident, and so is the 26-year-old right-hander. He can't wait to get this season started. With the Astros in West Palm Beach, Florida, Randy McAvoy, KPRC Channel 2 Sports. Randy, thank you. As for the sign-stealing fallout, as the Astros continue to receive a lot of criticism over their apology to the scandal, the biggest criticism coming from Dodgers star Cody Bellinger, who says he's lost respect for the Astros. I thought the apologies were whatever. Uh, I thought Jim Cranes was weak. Um, I thought Manfred's punishment was weak, giving him immunity. Um, I mean, these guys were cheating for three years. Um, you know, I think what people don't realize is Altuve stole an MVP from Judge in 17. Um, everyone knows they stole the ring from us. Wow, harsh. Bellinger was just a rookie in 2017 when he and the Dodgers lost to the Astros in the World Series. Exciting news for Rockets fans. Legendary Houston Rockets player and coach Rudy Tomjanovich is a Hall of Fame finalist. He was a finalist in 2017 and 18, 
but got snubbed last year from entering the Hall of Fame. He's one of eight finalists this year. The class of 2020 will be named April 4th at the NCAA Men's Final Four in Atlanta. Good luck. And we've over Prince Harry and Meghan this year. There was another great wedding. And it was appropriately <laughs> held on Valentine's Day. Coming up next, the special place where these two canines decided to hold their lavish wedding. <laughs> Welcome back. A lot of lovebirds are probably still celebrating Valentine's Day on this holiday weekend. But this year, it seems the holiday went to the dogs. Uh -oh. In South Carolina, two pups returned to the animal shelter where they first met to tie the knot. It was a chance encounter at that shelter that unleashed their love. Oh my God. It was their love for treats that quickly turned into love for each other. Honey and Duke were dressed in a beautiful gown and tux for the big day in front of all their family and friends. Duke, do you take Honey to be your dog wife? Yes. <laughs> honey, do you take Duke to be your dog husband? Do they understand what's going on? I think on? that was a yes and a yes. I don't know. But... It was a beautiful wedding. After the service of dogs, they were able to enjoy that delicious cake. Well, if you like that, there's more. The SPCA in New York held a series of doggy weddings yesterday. They were even officiated by a state senator. Wow, it's getting serious. <laughs> the dogs had their best wedding gowns and tuxes on, as you can tell. The event was intended to promote dog adoption, which is good. All of the particip oh, they're, they're gonna adopt out? They're so yeah, yeah. Yeah. Different, uh -oh. All of the participating canines are rescue dogs. A luncheon took place after the nuptials, which included a canine-friendly wedding cake. So sweet. And near Chicago, animals at the Brookfield Zoo got some special Valentine's Day gifts. The zoo staff handed out special Valentines to their favorite friends. The sea lions enjoyed giant gelatin cakes. That looks pretty mouth-watering. They look good. A lovable turtle slowly made its way over to <laughs> the heart-shaped watermelon. And of course, it took its time and time eating it. it took a little <laughs> bit there. And the gorillas also enjoyed their heart-shaped treats, but it doesn't look like they had any intentions of sharing. Nope. Oh, they, no. They got their treats and then went to the corner to enjoy them. They said, don't come near me. <laughs> hey, how about this music uh, on the, in the background of these stories? It's like, you know, I, I don't know what to say. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Frank Hambrell is speechless. Frank Espinosa, our producer, it. shame on you. I mean, that was that was overload. <laughs> okay, can we kill that music? Thank you very much. <laughs> As he said. I, you know what? I already have prepared my click two pen, and I'm gonna do it anyway. Although, I, I, if knowing what I just saw, <laughs> right. I might not have had it. Cue the music. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, you know, Schnauzer mom gave me that. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Okay, here's Boxy's shot here. All right, Boxy. moving Get on. this in from right. Oprah. <laughs> and now we know Boxy is a he and not a she, after I've been calling Boxy a she for I don't know how uh -huh. long. Boxy, you know, I apologized last week. This was, this was, this this morning. Sun rose, he says, quickly as it rose, went behind the clouds. So we're gonna see that throughout the day. By the way, we still need some rain. Look at us, we still are in this area where the, you look at the color coordinated areas here, we're still either abnormally dry, moderate, not along the coast there, but here abnormally dry, moderate for much of the Houston area. So we could use some rain. We'll get some a little bit going forward in this week ahead. 53 degrees currently down in Sugarland, 53 with that east wind at nine miles per hour. 49 in Tomball, 47 in Conroe. Bush is 48. Hobby's 52 in Galveston is 55. We'll continue to have those easterly winds for the most part, nine, six miles an hour and even less. The big picture for the United States, not much happening here. And for us, we'll gradually see some warmer air starting to come along the surface there, giving us more cloud cover, even more than we have today. That's going to be the trend. Look at these cold temperatures well to the north. This is current temperatures right now, 20 in New York, 22 in Columbus. The wind chill has been ridiculous up there as well but we're comfortable in the upper 40s and we're going to be in the mid 60s before it's all said and done today so that'll be a good thing here's a future cast model showing more clouds tomorrow showers are going to be off the coast going forward over the next several days monday a few showers around tuesday as well you notice that these have not been all around here but they've been to the north and to the east so the models aren't in agreement but we do know that wednesday is what day 
the Schmutz Day because there's going to be a lot more showers around from the north and the south, and clouds are going to be around as well. By Thursday, we'll start to see a decrease in the showers, and then we'll have more cloud cover as we go into next weekend. So for us today, in terms of the rain amounts for this rain throughout the week ahead, not going to be significant at all. Notice by Monday going into Tuesday and Wednesday, only about an inch and a half for the most part. So for us, exact track radar is quiet. We expect it to be that way. 66 degrees around for almost everybody, and that's going to be around 3 or 4 o'clock this afternoon. The 10-day look at the forecast, and you notice those rain chances going up slightly as we go from Tuesday into Wednesday. Wednesday is a schmutz day, as I said, and then it's going to be backing off very early on Thursday, but more clouds coming in. Clearing for Friday and Saturday with a chance of some showers coming back on Sunday and Monday. Guys? All right, sounds great. Thank you so much, Cambrell. February means a lot. Valentine's Day, of course, but also Mardi Gras. Yeah, get those beads ready. Take a look. Coming up next, you can't have a good celebration without some good food. And one chef says the best way to get that great food is adding some spice. Of course. It's Star. Welcome back. It's that time of year again. Mardi Gras celebration started in New Orleans and Galveston last night. So this morning we're celebrating with some good food and Chef and Chef Stephanie Bell with dinners at your leisure. Correct. Other people's specialty are the beads and the parades, your specialty, <laughs> the food. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> so what's this today? So I wanted to talk about some easy sides that people could put together and for their And we love easy parties. sides. Yes, people do. Um, I recommend when you're trying to get good Cajun flavor and you want to do it quickly yeah. to buy a spice blend. There's some really good high quality spices out there. You don't need to try to do it individually on your own. Just a spice blend. Exactly. <laughs> Don't make life harder than it needs to be. This reminds me of the Mexican street corn, but it's not the same. It's not the same. Not the it's same. not the same. Um, so this is a mock shoe, and uh, what we've done is we've roasted the corn with some of this Cajun Life seasoning. Um, mm -hmm. Their all-purpose Cajun seasoning is great. It's got that good Cajun flavor. It has some kick to it. So you want to roast that. You cut the uh, kernels off the corn, add it to some sautéed bacon and onion and green bell pepper. Oh. And then coat it with some cream, let it simmer down till it's nice and thick. What kind of cream? So heavy whipping heavy cream. Heavy whipping cream. When mm -hmm. you say coat it, I just, you know, pour a little <laughs> bit in there like I'm eating some cereal. Yes, exactly, exactly. <laughs> and if you pour too much, just let it simmer down and it'll thicken up. So it's it's pretty quick and easy to throw it together. So you roast this, well, how do you how do you do your corn? How do you roast sure. it? Sure, so what I like to do is I get the fresh corn on the cob, yeah. and then I shuck it. I'll rub it with some melted butter, some olive oil, yeah. pour my seasoning on, and then I actually put the husk back over it. Oh. Yeah, and then I'll throw it in the oven at 425, let it cook well, that look way. look at that tip. Or I'll throw it on the grill. Um, if you forget and you pull the husk all the way off, you can just wrap it in foil. Yeah. Okay, and after you do that, you cut it off, you add all of these, and then Correct. the cream, and then you're done. And so you're done, if yes. I want some of this, yes. where do I find it? You can find it at HEB, Kroger, uh, and Amazon, or you can visit their website at acajunlife.com. It is a certified Cajun product, so that means it's uh, packaged in Louisiana, so you know you're getting the real thing. Certified Cajun, that's what Correct. we want. Correct. Correct. And where can we find you? Dinners at your leisure. Dinners at your leisure.com. Um, I'm also on Facebook, also on Instagram. So you can find out more about me and our in home chef services. Thank you so much, Stephanie. We hope you can at least enjoy some good corn made yes. by yourself. If you want to see this again, you can check it out on our website on the community page. And that we will post after the show. And we'll be right back. This is home. All right. Welcome back. We've got some breaking news to tell you about now. We just learned that Houston police have safely located a missing 10-year-old boy. Right. We're told Crisan Oliva was found after he was last seen yesterday evening leaving an apartment complex with a friend in southeast Houston. Police say they have found the child and the child is in good condition. Good, good news this morning. Cam Brown? We love hearing that. And uh, let's talk about the zoo. It's a good place to go today. Well, this is the elephants area here. They're not out there right now, but they'll be out by the time you get there. Promise you. Uh, it's a good day to do that. 48 degrees at Bush Intercontinental, 52 at Katy, Hobby's at 52 as well. Galveston still at 55. So cool this morning. Jack is probably not a bad idea. Exact track radar, nice and quiet. You see the clouds that are there. They're in the upper levels of the atmosphere. That's going to be there. So we don't have the sunny day that we had yesterday, but Futurecast model shows that there's clouds that will stick around. We'll still see a chance for a sprinkle. Let's look at the time at the top. That's just after midnight. And you see a few showers, but they're mostly right off the coast. Mm -hmm. So that's why tomorrow you're going to be mostly a cloudy day as opposed to 
a rainy day, but the flow is going to be coming more from the Gulf. So with those clouds will be warmer. So instead of mid 60s, we'll be in the mid 70s. So 64 today, 66 today for the high, actually. And then warming up as we go into the week ahead. This weekend, not much in the way of rain at all. Sounds Thanks. good. Have a good day, everyone.